Hi, and welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today, I'm going to talk about G codes. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, um, I was having a look to all the videos that I've posted so far on YouTube and noticed that I haven't ever talked about G codes. Now, you don't really need to know G code in order to work with your laser engraver or 3D printer, but it's worth knowing a little bit about the subject uh, in order to improve your skills and also to be able to troubleshoot if you encounter some kind of problem with the machine. Now, the workflow that we've been uh, uh, using so far is uh, a type of workflow that uses a CAM system. Now, CAM is an acronym and stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. Now, although we haven't been using an actual CAM software, well, but we've been performing the same process in a multitude of steps. So the idea here is that um, we've been designing our project in some kind of drafting tool like AutoCAD and Inkscape. And then we've been uh, converting the output of that software for a plugin or a third party application into some kind of G code format. And that's, for example, the .nc and .g code itself that we should all be familiar with by now. Now, basically what we've been doing is to use this graphical type of tool to draw what we wanted the machine to produce and then to translate this into a language that can be understood by machine. In a sense, a G code is a language which is understood by CNC type of machines. Now, what is a CNC machine? A CNC is another acronym and stands for Computer Numerical Control. And CNC is a category of machines, actually I should say a broad category. And inside we can find machine including uh, laser engravers, 3D printers, uh, plasma cutters, a CNC milling or routing machine, LED, and so on. So basically any kind of machine that has some kind of moving axis and perform some kind of action and is controlled by a software, so by a computer. Now, uh, G-Code, and now we'll see an example on the screen. Uh, G-Code, it's a very simple and pretty straightforward type of language. And the G code, it's a language that will be compiled by uh, the, um, the motherboard, the firmware actually, that is installed in the motherboard of the specific device. In our case, for the laser engraver, the NEGE master, the NEGE um, type of laser engravers, we are using GRBL firmwares. So that uh, firmware will translate the G code into actual uh, electric uh, inputs to the stepper motors so that they perform the action that we want in order for the laser to uh, engrave or cut our product. Uh, similarly, this would work in a 3D printer, for example. This is um one of the projects that I used for some of my previous tutorials and is a piece of a puzzle which I drew entirely using uh, Inkscape and now I went already ahead with it and I exported its path using both of the extension that you should already know by now uh, watching my uh, videos um, so once you do that you get the output in uh, .nc code and .g code respectively and you should know already that basically I can plug these both codes into one of the two software the laser grbl for the g code and the uh, desktop application for the .nc code and they will basically perform the job um, now uh, I just want to open one just to show you exactly how a G-code looks like and also to explain you briefly 
um, some of the uh, letters, some of the commands, what they perform. And then I want to also highlight what the differences are between the .nc code and gcode and then to basically uh, let you understand why, uh, for example, the gcode cannot be operated with the uh, Nege desktop application. So now any one of those gcodes type of format can be opened up with um, uh, notepad built in Windows, so you can basically right click, click on open with and notepad, it's over here. And that's the way a G code looks like, pretty much, as you can see. So we get this G90, 20, uh, 21, G0, then M3, G1, and then as you can see, we have all of this repeating pattern. Now the number might be different inside, but they are like blocks of repeating code and these are all performing certain uh, geometries uh, part of our project. Um, now uh, if you happen to have a Visual Studio code which I use for programming you can basically open this up. Now I've installed a plugin so that it uh, renders the colors of this uh, G code and as you can see it makes it much easier to visualize what the parts of the G codes um, are, I mean the similar part of the G codes are. And I also have the G code on top over here and I will then show you in a while what the differences are. Now, a standard G code, um, the name, the reason why it's called like that is because it uses this G code, which I refer to it like geometrical code. But the idea here is that um, um, what you do or what actually the compiler uh, does when it's exporting uh, your geometry into a G-code type of format, it's basically setting up the coordinate system, uh, giving indication on the to the machine on how fast to move, and then basically uh, drawing the pattern. Okay, so giving indication to the machine on where to move and how to move in order to be able to draw the pattern which is part of your drawing or your project. So as you can see over here we got a G90 which stands for Absolute Coordinate System. That means that uh, uh, whatever is written afterward starts from the 0, 0, coordinate system. That means from the home of the axis of our uh, laser engraver. Then it's going to give us a G21. G21 is the uh, measurement system. Now this is in metric. G21 is metric. Uh, so every dimension it's basically here to be read in millimeters. After that it's performing a fast move. This is G0, it's a fast move uh, without performing any actual uh, operation like engraving or cutting or anything like that. And that's basically moving to a certain point, okay? We have the X's and the Y's value all over. So this is, I think, uh, pretty straightforward to understand that with G code and with, with G0, then we move at uh, 9.3535 35 millimeter and Y 5.9955 millimeter. After that, we have this M codes. Now, G codes, they are preparatory codes, while the M codes are miscellaneous code. The M codes are normally used to turn on and off certain um, action in the machine. For example, in our case, we want the laser to turn on at a certain point and then to turn off at another point in time. So as you can see, these blocks of code, they're all starting with M3 and then they are ending up with M5. So the M3 stands for turn on laser and the M5 stands for turn off laser. And then inside we have the actual movements. Now, uh, with the G1, we are telling the machine to move in a straight line from one point to another. Now, in this particular case, we are uh, setting up our feed rate. That means that the machine has to move now at, um, with, 30, with a speed of 30 millimeter per minute, okay, in a straight line. 
Now, uh, obviously, there are no um, coordinates, as you can see over here. So that's simply setting up this, the, the feed rate for that particular command. Then you've got your G3 and G2 and G1 following all over. So the idea here is that every geometry is basically can be broken down into three simple commands. These are linear movement. It's called specifically linear interpolation. And then there are circular movement or circular interpolation. And uh, the circular interpolation, there are two. One is clockwise and the other one is anti-clockwise. So a G2 will basically create a clockwise curve or rotation. And the G3 will um, produce a counterclockwise rotation. Uh, then, very simply, as you can see, when we are performing rotation, apart from the X and Y's values, we also get I and J's values. Now, um, I and J, they are the basic vectors of the vector space, okay? So, with this two piece of information, we are letting the system know what's the center of the curve about which the machine has to perform the action. So we could also give a radius. We could replace this two value with a simple R and whatever the radius happened to be. But a more precise way and especially adaptive for more complex pattern, it's better with this uh, I and J values. So as you can see, one, uh, as we scroll through this program, the pattern is all the same all over. So turning on the machine, turning it off, uh, setting up the feed rate, and so on and so forth. Now, what are the differences with the G .g .code file extension? Now, the difference here is that if you've been asking yourself, in this code, we don't have any power setting. So how is the machine supposed to know what power to use? Or in other words, if we were talking about a CNC router, what kind of speed the spindle should have in order to perform the action? And that's where the difference, the major difference is with the .g code file. If we open this up, the .g code file, you can see that now we are uh, going to see when we have an M3 code that we also have an S code. So S is for stands for power, and well, in reality, stands for speed. But since we are not having a, a spinning spindle, uh, spindle uh, this is going to basically act as a, a power in our case, in the case of a laser engraver. So as you can see, S125 which means approximately 50% power because the power goes from zero to 255. So, and there are also some additional command like the G4P0. This is basically a pause, okay? Which is not uh, actually required. As you can see, the pause is set to zero seconds. So, but this gives you the idea and the major difference between the .nc code and the .g code file and the reason behind the fact that the desktop application from the JET does not read .g code, because in fact, the desktop application from the JET, it's setting up the power setting and the speeds for you. So uh, all it needs really, it's um, a geometrical code that is telling the machine where to go but it doesn't really need uh, information about the power, the speed, and also how many passes. Uh, by the way, how many passes, the, if you set the passes greater than one, you will basically get repeated the exact same copy of the entire code once or twice or as many times as many uh, is the number of passes that you've been setting in your um, project. And this is... Uh, the basics of uh, G codes. So as you can see, once you know this uh, really few codes, I think there are like five, six different codes, you're basically able to code uh, yourself. 
Now, you are not required to code because there are softwares that makes it uh, pretty easy uh, for anyone. But if you want to get, if you want to dive deeper into it, you could do some bunch of customization. You can modify your um, G code on the fly. Or if you know that uh, the code that is being exported is limited because of the compiler, you can basically uh, perform some uh, modification. Now, I want to show you a really cool uh, tool that I found online. Uh, so let me first show you if we use a CAM software like Fusion 360. Okay, this is a sample that is already built in and I can show you like this. You have a way here to visualize all of the passes and also to animate uh, the tool going around your uh, workpiece. But how can you do that with your uh, G code for the laser engraver if you don't have a CAM software? So there is this interesting um, website over here. Let me just clear this all up. And now let's grab a piece of code. Let's get our NC code. Oops. Control A, Control C. Now let's go to the site and let's paste it over here. Control V. And then all we have to do is to click on plot. And as you can see, our puzzle piece is here. Now, what you can do is to go with the cursor all the way to the top of your G code file. And as you can see, when I do that a tool appear, and then you can click on play. This will basically animate the pattern. Now, a cool thing about looking at the animation is that one, we can see if the puff is optimized and here we can already notice that there are jumps for some reason the puff is not just following the contour of this uh, object to be engraved so this is not optimized we could eventually get into the G code and to change a little bit of this but we won't do that in this video um, but the other thing is that if you are uh, performing some 3D type of object for example using a 3d printer or actually let's let's say better a cnc router okay with z axis uh, uh, included uh, by performing the animation you will basically be able to see if uh, at some point during the process while the tool sweeps freely you know without working if it will collide with any one of the uh, parts of your object or the areas of your object in the workpiece. So this is very useful to avoid um, costly damages uh, or even to ruin up the uh, project itself. And this is uh, pretty much all. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you liked it, Click the FAMBA button below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!